All right, so tack is in the wall. The, oh my God, my math skills are just coming out now. Radius. Yes. So I'm gonna have to get very creative about repurposing things. If this is gonna work, it's gonna take a lot of coats of paint. Welcome to the journey and struggle of me making over a space. What's up guys, welcome back to our channel. Today is gonna be a fun one. I am going to pose a challenge on myself to see if it's possible to make over an entire room in my house without buying a single new item product supply for this adventure. As we know, given the current situation, it's not the easiest to get anything new. Um, ordering online takes forever and we can't go to stores. So I thought, why not just try and make the best of the situation and come up with this really fun challenge where I only have to rely on the things I already own. Now, this might seem like a little bit of an unfair advantage because I probably own more DIY supplies than maybe the average person does. I've got no idea how much paint is left in my basement. I'm gonna have to get really creative about reusing the items I already have. Oh, hello, friend. Goodbye. Even myself, though, I fall into the trap of looking at the things in my house as the way they already are, so I'm gonna have to get very creative about repurposing things and reusing them to make this space come together. I also wanna say that I realize that you don't have to spend a lot of money every time to make over a room, but for me, the shopping process of designing a space is always the most exciting, so I'm like basically removing that step out of this, and especially the thrifting process. I get the most excited to go to the thrift store and look for new pieces for a space because you never know what you'll find. And I cannot do that right now. That's very sad. I guess we'll, we'll have to go thrift shopping around my house and see what I can take and reuse for this new room. So speaking of this new room, what are we doing today? Well, before I jump into that, I wanted to give a huge thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. Now, the room we are doing is the bathroom in my basement. I bet you a lot of you didn't even know I had a bathroom in my basement. That's because it's kind of the guest bathroom. There is a bedroom downstairs, like the guest suite, and there's a bathroom like attached to it, and that basically only gets used by guests, which is why I think I've left it so long without making over it, because I don't see it every day, so it doesn't give me that constant itch to make it over. But I feel like it's gone too long. It seriously needs some help and this is the perfect time to do it while I am at home. So let's go check it out and see what I wanna do with this space. All right, so this is the guest bedroom, which is dying for a makeover of its own one day. <laughs> and we cross the hall and wow. Hello, oh, welcome to the bathroom. It's very sad, I realize this. There's like a thumbtack in the wall and I actually don't know why. <laughs> The shower curtain has fallen. I think it keeps falling down and I've just gotta fix it. This mirror, I never would have chosen this mirror. This light fixture is like, I, I, I can't even look at it. Oof, oof. This wall color is like a green yellow. Oh, and there's exposed piping that like, yeah, I don't know. But I mean, function wise, like the shower is clean and nice and you know, the toilet works as a toilet, so it's fine. It's just kind of sad. Okay, I wanna take you guys through a little bit of my creative process when thinking about making over a room. In all transparency, I haven't given this room a single thought until right now. So what you're seeing in real time is like me coming up with a plan because I haven't thought about this before. So what I do first is I usually go in the room and do kind of like a thinking out loud brainstorm of like what I actually want to change and tackle and what I realistically think can be done. Let's begin. Obviously, the biggest thing that we can change is the paint. It's this weird like yellow green color and I'm quite sure I have paint, even if it's just white paint of some kind, that I can paint this and maybe the ceiling too, just so it's all the same color of white. I think it could be cool to do some sort of like accent paint on this wall. I don't know what that looks like yet, but I'm getting visions of my circle headboard that I painted and thinking I could do something like to frame out the vanity area in like a different color, but I'm not sure yet. Another thing that's really bothering me is this light here. First of all, it's super not my style. Second of all, it's not centered above this at all, which just kills me. It's, I guess, centered on the wall. I don't even know. 
but I do know I've got the light fixture that I took out of my bathroom upstairs. If you haven't seen that video, check out the card. Um, and that can maybe go in this place and maybe help with the centering issues. So that's not bad. And I'm obviously not switching out a toilet. <laughs> like, I, like I was even gonna consider that. No. <laughs> this is great. I do like the wood of this a lot, but it's a different color wood than the floor. So there is the potential to paint this. And I probably still have, as long as I didn't use it all up, the same white chalk paint that I used upstairs. So I could paint that white. So this is white. The walls are maybe white. The flooring is fine. The shower curtain has got to get fixed. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> and then I'm sure you're wondering what's going on over here. Let me show you. So this little unit here, you might have just assumed is like a general storage unit, but you would be wrong because what it really is doing is housing the pipes that are under here. But the wall above it is pretty empty. Maybe we could do something with shelving if I have supplies for that to make it feel less like it's just floating on this empty wall by itself. And then this, you know, is pipes we need to access, but this is awful. So like I'm thinking some sort of art piece that can hang over top and cover that up. So once I kind of know the areas that I want to work on and I think I can tackle, I usually head to Pinterest. Pinterest is my bae. And it gives me lots of great inspo. So once I have the direction of what I want to do, I just look up pins of what other people have done to help get me inspired and maybe provide me with new thoughts that I didn't think before and like new things I could try out in this space. So let's do that. Head to the computer and make kind of like a mood board brainstorm of what we can actually do. So I'm heading to Pinterest to find some inspo and get inspired and I'm finding a lot of really cool stuff that is totally giving me ideas of what I can do. I'm also heading to the two kind of DIY supply drawers I have, just pulling out any odds and ends that I think could be useful. Some paint samples that I have, any sort of hardware that could be useful. Really just trying to find anything at all that could be helpful because I am gonna need it all. All right, let's see what we've got in the painting department. We got white. We got lots of white. White, white, white. Oh. And, oh, perfect. <laughs> a shower curtain. This, this is the one thing I knew I had to fix in this bathroom downstairs, so I just bought this forever ago and left it here. All these useful things. What else is useful in here? Anything, anything? No, okay. Let's get to painting. First color of paint is up on the walls and it already looks so much more brighter and fresher in here and I am loving it. Can't wait to get rid of this light though. But what I think I'm gonna do while I let this white paint fully dry before moving on is get the shower curtain back up and hanging and kind of finish this end of the bathroom. So this is the old shower curtain and it kind of has a pretty cheesy quote on it about travel. I think I bought it in a hurry because we had people coming over and I didn't have one for down here and it was like four dollars and I hate it. That's like one of the cardinal rules of designing a house is never rush if you have the choice not to. Don't just buy stuff because you want to fill up a space. Like take your time and think about what you're getting so that you end up getting things you like and not generic stock imagery photos with travel quotes over them. But if that's your thing and you thought about it, then do it. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is so much better already. Oh no. Oh, you, it's one of the, you gotta twist it. Okay, okay, I see, I see what's going on. First day here, I swear. Okay, wow. Perfect, beautiful, amazing, I love it. All right, you guys, I have to tell you that self-care has been become so important to me in these times. So that's why I've really been putting a focus on trying to like treat myself and pamper myself, especially when it comes to hair care. That's why I've been loving Function of Beauty's fully customizable hair range. And I have been loving it so much that I thought, I would get a second set to go in the shower downstairs so my guests could try it out and love it as much as I do. If you wanna get started with your own hair pamper routine, all you have to do is take the two minute quiz on the Function of Beauty's website. You can outline your hair type, your hair goals, and any other preferences you have. You get to pick 
like the scent of it, the color of the actual shampoo and conditioner. You can even have your name printed on it, which is pretty cool. Mine say function of Becky. Oh, white on white. I'm not sure this is the best, but trust me, it's there and I think it's very cool. So my hair is pretty thick and frizzy, so I wanted to add anti-frizz and deep conditioning as some of my goals. For the scent, I chose the rose scent, which like, oh my God. Rose is just one of my all-time favorite scents, like relaxing scents, it's so good. And I have to say that, was this weird to do on camera? I don't know, I washed my hair like two days ago and it still smells like this, which I feel like is rare to find in hair care products where the, the scent still like stays in your hair. So nice, it's so good. <laughs> you can also choose from a bunch of different colors if you want your products to be colored. I went for white, I just feel like you can't go wrong with white, it feels very fresh and clean to me. You can also add other products, like as add-ons to your order. I added the leave-in conditioner, which just really helps with that added hydration I was talking about. And again, this is rose scent and it smells so good. But there are other options like a hair mask and a serum as well. Function of Beauty also offers a subscription service where you can get your favorite formulas delivered to you on a delivery schedule that works for you. And one of my favorite things that Function of Beauty does, which you know is really important to us, is you can opt out of getting the actual plastic pump every time you get an order and just keep reusing the same pump every time you get a new bottle, which really cuts down on your plastic waste. And I love that that's a feature that you can choose. If you guys are at all interested in trying out Function of Beauty, you can use my link below to get 20% off your first order. All right, I'm gonna go place these in the shower and we can get back to the makeover. All right, it is day two. Still working on this bathroom, feeling re-energized, rejuvenized, ready to tackle this thing and hopefully get it done today. So I wanna deal with the lighting next. In the bathroom that I recently made over upstairs, I had this like bar lighting fixture that's kind of four lights. It's very like vanity globe lighting style. And I took it down and I held onto the old one, which is the good thing I did because I think I can use this in the new bathroom down here. And I'll tell you why actually this is the perfect light, I think, for it. I'm gonna try and stand way in the corner so you can see. But the current light is not centered above the sink at all. It's a little frustrating. So because of the nature of this long boy, you can kind of attach it to the wall wherever as long as at least some part of this is going over top of the like junction box. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping, I can put it with the very left side just covering and then like it'll center it a lot better. Do you see how if it's like all the way here, it's so much more centered than the current light? I hope. I still don't think it's gonna be perfect, but it might be a lot better. So let me swap those out and we can see what we're working with. We have a new light up. Um, I had to run around my house and try and find as many light bulbs as I could to fill this bar. One of them is not the same as the other three. I don't think you can tell that bad on camera. Well, who knows when in the future I'll go out and buy matching ones. <laughs> I know they make ones that are like, the front of the bulb is like frosted or covered in a way so it's not so like harsh to look at. But honestly, for now, it's up. And does it look more centered? Hmm. Like from that angle, it's not so bad. It's like the tiniest bit off-centered, but it's so much better. And I think if you weren't looking for it, you might not notice. And what I wanna do next, I think might help as well. What do I wanna do next? <laughs> Okay, I found my train of thought. So we took down that mirror that was there, so we need to put a new one up, and I have exactly the one to sacrifice and put in place. Go back across the hall into the guest room. There is this mirror here, hello. This is, I'm pretty sure an Ikea mirror that came from our old house, and I just put it down here because it didn't have anywhere else to go upstairs. And I'm sure it's useful in the guest room, but it's gonna look even nicer in the bathroom, so I'm just gonna take it. I'm gonna take it with us. I'm gonna try and one-handedly take it with us. No, I'm not, okay. <laughs> so the question is, do we center it above the sink or center it below the lights? Which are still a tiny bit not the same. So that is like centered above the sink, but that is like centered below the lights or do we do somewhere in the middle so that <laughs> if everything's slightly not the same then it 
helps it to all look the same and you don't realize it's so off-centered. I'm gonna figure it out and get this hung. Why couldn't they have just made this light socket centered above the sink? It would have made my life so much easier. <laughs> Welcome to the journey and struggle of me making over a space. I think I'm gonna do centered above the sink. It will just look weird if it's not because it's gonna be so much more obvious. You're literally standing at the sink trying to look at yourself. You're not standing at the sink trying to look at the lights. You're standing at the sink trying to look in the mirror. So if you're looking and it's like, it's gonna be weird. Let's do it. Let's just do it. Okay. Okay, so when I was browsing on Pinterest, I saw a couple photos, which I will insert here, which like totally got me inspired and thinking of a really cool paint feature I could do in the bathroom to really bring it to life. So we're in my paint closet here and I have this orange G terracotta E color that I use for painting my bedroom upstairs, which I think I will use to do this. Basically what it is, is a giant arc shape that I'm gonna do around the sink and the rounded mirror. I think coupled with the shape of the round mirror, it's just gonna be a really beautiful accent to make that whole area feel like this really cool vibe. Let's go. Remember there was this thumbtack randomly in the wall? Well, that's perfect because I'm gonna need this to help draw my circle shape on the wall. I'm gonna just put this up, but it's gotta come down temporarily. Find the center of where the mirror was. And then we need to figure out how much bigger we want the shape to be than the mirror size. I feel like I don't want it to come up to this light because then the shape's gonna get cut off. So I might just go right to the light. So the trick here is to take a piece of string and a pencil and a nail or a tack of some sorts and make your string as long as half of your circle. And then when you put the tack in the wall, you can use the pencil to make a perfect circle line. So I need this to be 18 and a half inches from tack to pencil. All right, so tack is in the wall, one half of the circle. Length is drawn out and see how it's movable. We can now make the most perfect circle shape you've ever seen in your life. Okay, let's go. Oh my God, that's so satisfying. Oh, I just threw the tack on the floor. My feet are gonna thank me later. So here's the circle I drew and you can see where it reaches. It's like max width here. I'm just gonna draw a straight line down to the floor and then that'll make a really nice arch shape. I'm gonna mix some of the City Sunrise with the white, I think just to make it a little lighter. Fun, right? <laughs> what color are we gonna come out with? Nobody quite knows. All right, paint is mixed, shape is drawn. Let's get to it. All right, so while that painting on the wall dries, I want to paint the mirror and the light fixture because they're the only two things that are actually black in the bathroom and they're kind of killing the vibe. I've got them here ready to go. So I just went into the garage to check on our spray paint stash and we have white, but I was so sure that we had gold still and we don't, which is making me very sad because I was so set on doing the mirror with a white base and paint it the same color as the arch and then painting the light fixture gold so that it would match like the other gold features in the bathroom. I just can't picture it any other way because if I do it white I feel like it's gonna just look cheap. I don't know. So I went inside and the only thing I could find was this craft paint that is spun gold. I don't know how old this is and how it's even gonna look if I paint it on. Will it stick? Will it look brush strokey? I got no idea. So we're just gonna try it and hope for the best. Alrighty, here we go. Color looks interesting. I just want my can of gold spray paint back. <laughs> if this is gonna work, it's gonna take a lot of coats of paint. This is how it's looking. I thought the sponge might give me a better chance of it not being brush strokey, but 
All right, well, I'm gonna give it the full try, do a couple coats, and hope for the best. All right, it's day three and I feel like things are really coming together now, so let me show you the updates. The mirror is hung up in a spot and I think the trim of it blends really nicely with the painting on the wall. The light is now up and I think it turned out okay. The paint actually did work, it just took a ton of coats and it has this really textured effect because I use a sponge brush, but I honestly think it looks like hammered metal, which is kind of cool. And as far as the vanity goes, it's in the process of getting painted white. The first coat I did was with a chalk paint because it's really thick and it adheres well to surfaces. And then I went over it with the white that we're using for the walls so it matches, but it needs another coat still. And I've been using this sanding block in between coats just to get rid of any paintbrush strokes. You could also use a roller for this, but I am limited on supplies, so I'm kind of using what I have. And since I had the paintbrush out already, that's what we're doing. So while that dries, there's kind of one last thing, I, one major thing I want to figure out is something for this wall. I would love to do shelves above this just so this doesn't feel like such a random floating unit and then we can put something on the shelf to cover this. So let's head outside and see what scrap wood I can wrangle up to make some shelves out of. Oh my god you guys, it is such a nice day out today. I can't believe I've been hiding out in the basement this whole time and it's been so nice out today but things have got to be done, rooms have got to be made over so let's get back to work. So. Outside the garage, it is a mess and this backyard really needs a makeover, but that's not for today, baby. <laughs> These are some live edge scraps, which are gonna be way too heavy. This is a board, which could get painted, but it's a little wide for what I need. In the garage, there is little scraps. There are some boards precariously tucked up here on the roof. I'm gonna try and pull, that one looks easiest, and I think I can use this one. Let's see, ceiling boards. Sometimes they're, I, I don't know if they're like up there for structural support, or if they're up there just chilling as storage. Let's find out. I think this will work. I cannot get over how nice of a day it is out today. Oh my god, you guys, I just came into the garage to look for wood stain because I thought we had some way at the back here. And look what I just found. What is this? What? What is this? Is this um, God spray paint that I was so sure we had? I think Austin did some cleaning up and put cans back here that I wasn't even aware of. Like, this is, I think, I was looking for white paint earlier. Oh my god, look at this. You guys, uh, I cannot believe I spent like six hours painting that light with craft paint when I didn't have to. I'm like killing myself right now, but <laughs> that's why it's important to keep stuff organized. A little life lesson for me. That's insane. Okay. Well, I was looking for wood stain because I would wanted to do the shelves, maybe the color of the floors to tie that in. What do we have? Puritan pine. Puritan pine. Clear. What is this one? Dark walnut. Okay, it might be one of those two. <laughs> Danny in the back playing with his favorite soccer ball. Guys, I cannot, I still cannot get over that spray paint. Like, what was the one place you don't look? I swear, you could look uh, 99 spots in your house and give up, and then it's the 100th spot that has that thing that you were looking for. Some like grease stain on this wood. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> we'll just put it underneath at the bottom of the shelf. Can we look at Danny? He thinks he's hiding behind this tree and that I don't see him. Danny, that tree is like an inch thick. You ain't fooling nobody, boy. Look at him, look at him. Oh my, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> All right, this is how we looking. Looking so far, looking pretty good. Okay, now as for how I'm actually gonna hang the shelves, I don't have any shelf brackets that I can use, but what I did find when I was going through the drawers to get inspo for this video, I found these, which are brackets from a curtain rod. 
I didn't end up using it like as the curtain rod. I ended up using the black rod as my bathroom shower rod in my current upstairs bathroom. So I've got the hardware left over. I don't see why I couldn't just take the hook part off and then use this part as a shelf bracket because my bracket my shelves aren't going to be that deep or that heavy i'm just i'm just saying i see what i see and i feel like this is a good solve for this problem so since i also found that gold spray paint <laughs> i'm going to take these pieces outside and spray paint them gold as well i've got three of the curtain rod hardware pieces and then i found one little like 90 degree brace which i think will work as well for what i need you gotta make the best out of what you got right actually on second thought i think i'm just gonna paint them white because then it will blend into the wall and we won't really see it because they don't match. I don't want it to be a moment where it doesn't need to be a moment. I'm trying to think how the best way I know this is centered. Is this a ridiculous hack? Maybe. It just needs to be close. Wow, that is a beautiful Lee level shelf. Have you ever seen anything more level in your life? Truly, it's a good feeling. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's looking so good. So this is fully painted white now. Have these new handles on, which luckily I found them in my drawer of supplies. We have the shelves up and looking great. My little curtain rod support thing hack is working fine. They're like on there very solid and looking great. So all that's missing now is the final touches, baby. Because we got a bunch of empty shelves now that need some decor and a, the gap to fill with something. So let's head to thrift shop to Becky. Yeah, that's a place. <laughs> I'm gonna pop some tags, only got zero dollars in my pocket. Okay, but for real though, I went around my house and gathered every single little piece of decor that either wasn't being used or wasn't in a spot that I totally loved and I put it all on my coffee table to create my very own little thrift shop experience. Look, we've got the wood section, we've got the ceramic section, the candle section, the faux plants, although these are real and dried out. I mean, if you're missing something during this time at home, just try your best to create it for yourself. Although I have to say, like, do we not wish that thrift stores always looked this good? This is it's a pretty solid looking collection, not to like dust the dust off my own shoulder, okay. Oh, I forgot one other thing too. This we had, it's one of those like letter boards. It used to have our Wi-Fi information on it. Now it just says whiff. I'm gonna find something cute to write on this. I think, and I haven't done the math, but I think this will be wide enough to cover that gap in the wall. I'm really hoping so. So I'm gonna bring all my collection of items downstairs and start placing them around and make it look cute. Oh my God, you guys. It's like the exact width of this space. This is crazy. Do you see how crazy that is? Not as crazy as my voice was just there, but Wow, 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 wow. Off to a great start. I have two additional Function of Beauty products I want to leave out on the shelves. This is a hair mask and this is a leave-in conditioner. Oh, it looks so cute displayed like this. It's giving me like spa vibes. This shelf I bought online a while ago um, for a different spot in my house, but when I got it, I didn't realize how small it was in real life. You can't put much on it, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with it in here, but it is a really good item to just fill up the space above the toilet. A candle that could go. See how small it is? Like, you can fit a candle, but you obviously can't burn a candle there. This is from Target, Target Canada. That's how old this bowl is. <laughs> I'll keep it simple, something like that. Just a nice kind of space filler. This is bathroom room spray, so smells really good. I think it makes sense to leave it by the toilet so people get the idea. <laughs> okay, you guys, I gotta give this place one final wipe down and, oh, fill out that sign, but then we can finally say the bathroom makeover is complete. All 
right, you guys, the guest bathroom makeover is totally complete now, and I am so proud of where we ended up. I didn't know where we would go when we started this little journey together, but this was such a fun challenge, and I'm so happy with the results. I'm glad to have that space tackled and done. I would love to see you guys try out this challenge as well. It could even be a corner in a room in your house. Just find a new way to look at it, a new way to repurpose and upcycle the things you have using the things that you already have because you know we're all about that on this channel. If you guys like this type of video, you like seeing me make over spaces, make sure to subscribe. We do this all the time and I'd love to see you around here more often. And again, a big, huge thank you to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video and helping us do what we love. So thanks for watching guys and we will see you next time. Bye!